Stay tuned, we're going to disassemble the porta boat and stow it in its racks on the RV. Welcome to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. We're going to be taking that boat apart today, and this video will be showing it on the boat and uh, doing a special favor for one of my fans. He wanted me to uh, show him the measurements and stuff and cuts of each of these seat boards because apparently he had a boat given to him by his dad and somebody in the family had thrown away all the seats. He saw my video and he looked to find that there's hope for his boat since I have an original. Yes, this is an original if you notice the uh, current media posted on the internet on this. Uh, the boat is like the Genesis uh, and there's another model those are the newer versions of this I think this was the original version because it has wooden seats and all those other boats have plastic seats so I'm going to answer a few questions from some of my viewers today on this boat uh, since you asked First of all, this seat keeps coming off because the original hole drilled in here, you can see where it's torn off. So I'm going to either re-drill a hole next to it or put a steel bracket in there and tap a hole big enough for the pins to go through it and hold this in place. And so that bracket will be screwed in there so the seat will keep, won't keep coming off. And also, this middle support here. It obviously broke because it's nothing but a plastic hinge and it was replaced with some leather hinges. I suppose leather because it's a watercraft and metal will uh, rust. So if I get some cabinet hinges or something that won't rust, I could put those on and replace these as they break. Okay, to answer some of the questions, it does have oar locks. Uh, or brackets for the oars and for the oar locks to go into. I will be purchasing the oar locks because I did not find them with a boat. And also I'll be purchasing a couple of oars for this boat. Now on the transom is big enough to handle a pretty big engine as you can see in some of the links below. I'll leave some down below about some of these boats with big engines on them and other size engines you can take off and just zoom across the lake with this. Pretty impressive. Uh, for this little uh, craft, but it is in spite of its appearance pr really durable And one of my other viewers um, was um, uh, Commenting on the capacity uh, Well the sticker on the boat right here. I'll show it right here the sticker just simply says maximum capacity for a person or 485 pounds now it supports uh, as this tag says, uh, up to a seven horsepower motor that you can put on the transom here and 570 pounds total weight and that factors in all of your gear and the motor. Okay, let's see how fast this tears down.
pair of shoes today. The 11s were too small and the 12s are too big, so I now have to return them because they obviously got their sizes all screwed up. Stupid. Happy to get her. I'm sure they will be. We just took a tour last night and went to like the first night. Matt and I did. Get a I'm just going to use this Harbor Freight short strap to keep it together and then we're going to go ahead and mount it on the trailer. A little bit about this boat. It is a 13 foot Genesis 3 model and uh, I don't have or it didn't come with the optional uh, bow bladder and cap. So. Uh, Everything's here except for that, and I, I am missing some supports from the front seat. So let's see if I can, uh, you know, take off this lock and fit that boat in this. Let's see. One of these keys goes to this lock. I'm not sure which key though. Aha, uh -huh. there we go.
Okay, and it locks into place. Oh, gotta go forward. There we go. And the boat's locked and secured. Now the boat's locked and secured in place and it's ready to go camping. Okay, well now let's get busy and do the measurements of the transom and the three seats so my viewer can uh, make his own. Four, five, six, three quarter. It's three quarter inch plywood. So the thickness of plywood you're working with is three quarter inch plywood. This transom piece is going to be five and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches. So your cutout here on this back transom is going to be an inch and a half deep, of course by uh, eight and a half inches for this to, to fit into. Uh, you just take a little piano hinge, short piece, and it doesn't look like it's anything special, but it's uh, got notched here, so it'll work just fine. The total depth, the nominal depth of this transom is going to be 17 inches and you're going to make uh, a curved cut here and a curved cut here so and the bottom's going to be curved so I get, actually it's going to be about cut an 18 inch piece that is square and then you're going to have to trim it out uh, to form the boat it's four feet wide exactly so you can cut the plywood at its uh, nominal length So, it's, it'll be four feet at the top for the transom, and the bottom where it tailors down, it's going to be, it's going to go down to 43 and a half inches, and then angle down. So don't forget to put in the supports here. These are actually uh, steel uh, reinforcement plates, and the ends you're going to have these are just regular straight reinforcement plates and then the ends you're going to have some L brackets because that's what's going to bolt to the boat. And you'll need to tap your holes according to the holes on the boat on your spacing. So this is the transom piece that laps over the back of the boat on the outside and this is where your motor attaches. These pieces are about uh, 7 8 inch wide and they come to be about 8 inches long. The angle of iron is about 7 and 3 quarters inches so your angle pieces are going to be 1 and a half inch by 1 and a half inch angle. Looking at the rear seat it looks like it had three supports. These other two supports angle out to support it. So these are missing. I don't know what the size of them are. I do have the center support. The center support measures 13 inches by one foot and this only look all this is is a, a water pipe that is split and put down as a guard that's all that is this is a one inch plastic uh, like an irrigation pipe that's all this is and I noticed I was missing one on that middle support so I'm gonna have to cut a new one and put it on so it's just it's just sliced down the length of one pipe and it's just uh, held in place. It's not stapled or anything. It's just held in place by the uh, natural forces of the grip of the uh, product. So the longest distance of this board is 42 and a half inches. And the front part of it is 37 inches. The seat is exactly one foot wide. And of course this is mounted in the center and this faces the front of the boat. This will be the seat for the bow of the boat. And of course on this side you have two drill, uh, two holes that are drilled, uh, drilled according to your brackets on the side of the boat for the hole for the pins to go down and keep this in place. And this is just several layers of a rubber foam material that is glued together. That's all this is for a seat uh, for uh, cushioning and also for flotation in case it sinks. This is the centerpiece. It has this middle support. It has these two end supports that angle like that. So let's give you the measurements of those. The end supports measure uh, 11 and 3 quarter inches. Nope. 
11 and 3 8 inches by 1 foot. Of course, 11 3 8 inches by 1 foot. The centerpiece is, of course, 1 foot, and it measures 11 and 1 quarter inches. The whole seat, you see I need to replace the hinge right here. I think I can get away with just a simple piano hinge or something. So, the seat, the actual seat, measures, this is the center, one side measures 49 and a quarter inches, and the other side measures 49 and a quarter inches. So this one is square. And it is, yeah. And of course, this is the back side. And again, you have your holes drilled here and here. I'm going to use some straight brackets and screw them in here and tap the hole for the pin because this is torn out and the seat doesn't stay uh, because of the, the, uh, the flimsiness or the variability of the, uh, the hole itself. So we're going to go ahead and fix this later and also this centerpiece adding a, uh, adding a uh, hinge. This seat right here again is, it looks like it's just a foam. One, two, three, four, five pieces of foam glued together with some kind of adhesive. And again, for cushioning where you're seating and also for buoyancy in the event that the, the boat sinks, this will make, help it float. This is the rear seat. And of course, this is your rear supports right here and your center support over the rear. And the rear face is that way. This would be the transom of the boat on this side. So, uh, the size of these uh, are, of course, one foot by 11 and a quarter inches. One foot by 11 and a quarter inches. 11 and a quarter inches by one foot. So all the three pieces are the same size. This is again one, uh, 12 inches wide, and the, uh, the the seat measures 49 and a half inches going towards the center of the boat, and 49 and a quarter inches on the back of the boat. Again, you have two holes that are tapped in each end, and each hole is for holding the pins in the brackets. And again, you have the cushion. That's it on all the pieces that go inside the boat in addition to the boat itself. Uh, I might add that the transom does also have some of this foam glued to the back of it, again, for buoyancy in the event that the boat should sink. You have some. Uh, salvageability for your boat. I hope this answers all your questions that you had from an initial video. It is a real cool toy to have. I'm excited about getting out with my grandson and doing some fishing up at one of our mountain lakes here in the area. So uh, we're going to go ahead and stow this in the coach. Let's see if I have room in here. I'm not sure what key goes to this. Ah, yep. And oh, I found it. I didn't think I had it because it's uh, the uh, online stuff says it was optional, but it's the uh, front piece that goes on the boat. Uh, one of my viewers, Mark, had mentioned that uh, it looks like it's missing a piece. Well, Mark, it's not missing. I found it stuffed away in this hatch. Yay. I need a couple of wing nuts and bolts to bolt it on, though. But look it, it's the Genesis 3 Porta Boat. Nice. All right, so I'm going to store the stuff in here. The bow of the boat, I'll store right there now that I know I have it. I just got to get a couple of carriage bolts and some wing nuts to secure it in place when I go take it out on the lake. Okay, let's try to store the transom there. Put that there. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. Now let's put this one there. Okay. That I'm going to have to store somewhere else. That one seat won't fit in there, so I'm just going to put the chairs back in here, put this canopy back in here, and store this uh, rear seat in the closet inside. That's not where I want to put it, but I have no choice right now. Towels in there won't fit. Come on, tell me it's gonna fit. Oh, it'll fit right here. I think. My uh, coffee got cold. Let's see if it warms up my coffee. Mm. Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys for. <laughs> Uh, sharing this adventure with me on taking apart the porta boat and putting it away on the trailer in its brackets. Oh, I'm your host Jerry Hansen here at Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. Thank you guys for joining me on this uh, on the Genesis 3 porta boat uh, takedown and stowing away on the RV. Uh, you can follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Reddit, Google+, and uh, a few others. So, that's it. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Also, check out these videos right here. This one talks about, or actually shows how I put the porta boat together. And this one right here actually shows you where I got the porta boat.